Okay, often in debates, people like to make the point creation is religious, evolution is scientific, and nothing could be further than the truth. I mean, normal science is supposed to be what you see, test, observe, uh, and can repeatedly do. Now, I remember talking to our parliamentarians in Australia and saying, do you know anybody who's made anything evolve? No. Have you ever met anybody who is evolving, right? Have you ever come across a geologist who said, this is the missing link and it's the proof of evolution? And their answer was no, no, no. And I said, well, why aren't we allowed to teach that in schools? And at that stage with that government, the very next day, they legislated the right to teach creation because evolution has no scientific basis, no factual basis, no, no basis at all. It's purely a modern myth designed to justify humanism. At the other end, when you say, well, okay, that's fine, but what are you going to do to teach the scientific evidence of creation? And I love to ask them, well, what do you think a creation is? And most people try to give a religious answer. But in reality, everything in this room is a creation. None of this happened by itself. So if you want a simple definition, an evolution is anything can naturally happen by itself. Hydrogen can turn into people all by itself. No God, no intelligence, no nothing, right? A creation perspective is, hey, you want something designed, it never happens by itself. But what's the evidence? Okay, this microphone above me, right? It's actually made of plastic, it's made of metal, it's made of copper with the wires and that. And everybody in the world knows that that copper did not get out of the mine, arrange itself into wires and connect itself to a generator so it could run electricity. Somebody who existed before all of this microphone, who's not a part of the microphone and who's smarter than the microphone, actually put all of those bits together because they can never do it by themselves. Come to me, right? I am made of stuff that's got DNA in it that organises and says fingers here, eyeballs here, good looking face there, Australian, sorry about that, uh, organises creationresearch.net website and that doesn't happen by itself. But you see, I'm, I'm also full of stuff called DNA and, and the theory of evolution says it all happened by itself. But when you look at DNA, it's got carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulphur in it. Not one of those things does codes by itself. We're familiar with codes now, Windows, Apple, etc., computer codes, and you pay for the computer because it doesn't happen by itself. Likewise, when you look at our coding, our coding makes Bill Gates' stuff look chicken play, right? It looks amateurish, right? So what you'll find is that the DNA in us is one of the best evidences that in the beginning God created. Why? Because our DNA produces after its kind, produces after its kind. So right back to the first human. And that DNA has all the characteristics of something that never happened by itself. Carbon does not do codes. Hydrogen does not help out with wording systems. Nitrogen does not make for a system that will actually design something to produce its own kind. So DNA is 100% coded information made of 100% non-coding parts. It's God's signature. I existed before it, I'm not a part of it, and I'm way smarter than it. So the evidence of creation is staring us in the face and outside of the face. <laughs>